Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at Unit 3 in ACT prep about substitution, combining like terms, and solving equations. Now, even though these are really basic things that you've been doing since pre-algebra, Algebra 1, they're one of the things that people tend to speed through and make silly mistakes on. So we're going to take an opportunity today, if this is one of the areas where you struggle a little bit with some of the detail work, so maybe have the calculator help us out a little bit with some things. So what we're going to find out is, now up here at the top, is some general ideas on how you would use the store function on the calculator. Well, I thought, better idea. Let's actually do some here together to try and make this work out. So for instance, if we take a look at the first one, I'm going to try to keep this lined up so we can stay as well lit as we can here. Normally I would tell someone, well just go ahead, plug the negative 2 in everywhere, get your answer. And I'll actually do that here in a minute, but I want to show you how the store function works. So my x value here is negative 2. Now make sure you're using the negative down at the bottom here. Let me move this up a bit so we can see everything a little bit better. The negative down here, instead of using the minus, the minus will get you an error message. So you do negative 2, then you're like this store function thing. Oh, STO right here. If I hit that, this little arrow comes up up here. And then I hit this button with x and t and what's called theta and n, and that'll get me my x. I hit enter, you're like, well, it just says negative 2. But that's the calculator communicating to me, hey, I know that you want me to plug in negative 2 whenever I see x in the next part. So then we're ready to actually plug in the equation here. So we've got 3, there's our x. If you hit x squared, it won't say x squared, but it will get you the squared on there. So plus 5, minus 5x. And you'll notice this takes a little bit of time. But again, if details aren't your thing, it's not a big deal. Because now when I hit enter, the calculator just did all the calculating for me and got me the answer of 16. Now let's just make sure the calculator is doing this right. Whenever I'm going to substitute on my own, and this is what the calculator is actually doing, we're always going to use parentheses. Helps us with our order of operations. So when I go to do order of operations from last time, what comes first? Exponents. Only on the negative 2, not over to the 3 as well. So I work that out, and then I remember, well, multiplication, negative times negative is positive. And you start to look at this, and you're like, you know, maybe the calculator isn't a bad idea sometimes. If I struggle with this, now I can just add straight across, because addition and subtraction are in the same level of order of operations. 17 plus 10 is 27, minus 11 is 16. Now again, I prefer to do it manually. I know, I feel I know what I'm doing when I'm working through these. But if for some reason you're not sure of yourself sometime, you can always go sure it, go back and make sure that that works out for you. So let's do one more. And actually, let's do the one right below there in example three. We're going to have x equals negative 4. So we're going to clear things out here. We're going to try this again. So again, your number, the store button, and x. Make sure you hit enter to get your 4 in there. And then again, you just type in what you see. So I see a negative, and again, the white button, x squared plus x minus, different from negative, 7. We go ahead, and we hit that now. We're told it's negative 19. Let's just make sure. So negative, notice the negative here is outside of my parentheses. Okay, because I don't want to do negative 4 squared. That's not negative 4. Well, what difference does that make? Well, when you start to notice, 4 squared is 16, but the negative is still going to be there. Negative 16 plus 4 is negative 12. Minus 7 is negative 19. And we are ready to head to the other side. Okay, and we're back. Now we're going to be doing some combining of like terms. I am a big fan here of using different symbols or colors to kind of combine like terms. You'll also notice as you start to look at some of the answers that the largest exponent is always first. That's what's called putting it into degree order when you look for the largest exponent. So that's what we're going to do here. And like I mentioned up here, watch the signs in front of the terms. That minus goes with that 6x squared. So 2 and negative 6 is negative 4x squared. So I start to look down here and I'm like, ooh, that doesn't have x squared, that doesn't have x squared, that doesn't have x squared. I've already eliminated three of the possible answers. So then I go looking like, okay, x, negative 4 and positive 4. Well, they wipe out. So all I got left is the minus 5. 
and that's the one I've got. Keep it simple. Okay. No choices. Again, I don't see any squareds or anything, so I go straight to the x's first. 4x minus 2x is 2x minus 2x is, oops, all the x's are gone. Negative 7 minus 2. I owe another 2 bucks or something. Always think money with these. I owe $9. Ooh, I found $9 in my pocket. I owe nothing. Not no solution, but that I owe nothing for that one. And finally, solving equations. Again, if you follow these steps, it keeps life simple. We don't have any distributing. We don't have any like terms that are on the same side of the equals to combine. All of our x's are on one side, so basically we're to step four on this one already, which is anything that's not attached to x needs to go. So the opposite of plus and 13 is to minus it. Divide to finish. And what's negative divided by negative equal? That's right, positive. And they'll try to trick you because there's negative three right there. So be cautious. The other one, a little more complex. It says, do we have any distributing to do? Absolutely. To both terms, not just the first one. And some of you may say, well, I can do two or three steps at a time. And that's fine. You know, no big deal. I want to see something, though, to make sure that we're getting this right. Like terms on the same side of the equals. Again, watch your signs and be careful. It's better to take your time and get it right than to hurry and get it wrong. Get all the x's to one side by doing the opposite. I like keeping my x's positive. I also, as you can see, like using colors to keep my steps separate. And then what do I do to get x by itself? Well, since I'm minusing 14, I'm going to add 14 on both of those and get my answer. So good luck with the assignment. Any questions, as always, let me know.